Ezekiel chapter number 22. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, again, inspiration, and chapter after chapter after chapter. Now thou son of man, wilt thou judge? Judge not, least ye be judged. And we read that back over in chapter 20, verse 4. Wilt thou judge the bloody, murderous city? That's what the bloody means. Yea, thou shalt show her all her abominations. Now remember, he's in Babylon. Jeremiah is over in Jerusalem preaching. God is called a verily, verily. You need to pay attention. I have called Jeremiah, I have called Ezekiel. And before I pronounce this final judgment the third time Babylon's coming, I'm going to tell you what your sins are. Now be wise that God is going to tell you in your lifetime what your problem is. What your sin condition is before he passes judgment, saved or lost. And one of the ways he'll do it is he'll give you a conscience which the Bible says you can sear. You can destroy your conscience for your worst half. Your worst being. I mean the word worst. But he's sending to Judah, he's sending to Jerusalem, these two men. This is why I'm going to do what I'm going to do. It's not the mean, nasty, cruel God. It's not an act of God, according to insurance papers. It's an act of sin. The wages of sin is death. Then thou shalt, then say thou. All right, this is not Ezekiel's words. Thus saith the Lord God. The city sheddeth blood in the midst of it. They are murderers. And even Jesus told them that they were killing the prophets. That her time may come. Judgment. The third and final time that Babylon will come. And maketh idols, number two, against herself to defile herself. So they're killing and they're idolaters. Gee, I wonder what church that is today. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed, twice mentioned of murder, and hast defiled thyself in thy idols which thou hast made, twice mentioned, and thou hast, ca hast caused thy days to draw near, and art come even unto thy years. Yes, you can die before you I think God has a set time for us all. And you can die before that time. Keep living in sin. And God will have to take you home. Keep doing things to your bodies that doesn't belong in your bodies. Drinking, smoking, drugs. Improper sexual conduct will shorten your lifespan. Certain occupations will cause you to have a shortened life. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen. Not just to God, but to the heathen. And a mocking to all countries. Do you know what the church is today to the world? You go try witness to him. Well, I know this preacher. I know this woman that played the piano. I know this deacon. It's a mockery, our church age today. Those that be near and those that be far from thee shall mock thee, which are infamous and much vexed. You know, I don't know about the library, but maybe so. You probably go down to a bookstore and look online. I bet you can find a lot of jokes about Jewish people. Just as much as Polish jokes. Now, I'm, a, I'm a Polak. I enjoy a good Polish joke. Behold, the princes of Israel, every one were in thee to their power to shed blood. Uh oh. A political government of murderers. Now we're going to get into some disgusting things now, but they must be said and they must be taught. In thee have they set light by father and mother. That means they have shown their parents 
to the authorities, to the police, to to make known what was going on in secret. They were charging their parents. In the midst of thee have they dwelt by oppression with the stranger. A stranger come in. You remember Abraham when, when, the, when the three men come? And he sat them down on, probably underneath a tree. He told Sarah, make some dinner. He went and got the, the fresh cow and made some uh, 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 calves meat, which is, uh, um, I can't think of the name of it now. Ben, no, ben, veal. Man, he took care of them. And you see, even Lot took care of some visitors that came. Here comes a, here comes a person, it's a stranger in, in Jerusalem, and they're mistreating him. Set light by their father and mother. That's one of the ten commandments. Honor thy father. They were doing dishonor to their parents. And they have they vexed the fatherless and the widow. Go back and read what the fatherless and the widow. Get yourself a, a concordance. Look up fatherless. Look up widow in the law. They were supposed to be properly treated and they're not being treated. That goes with the murder. That goes with idolatry. God is naming now let me ask you a question. If he is naming in Ezekiel 21, 22 the sins of the people, and Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. What do you think, Christian, when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, what do you think Jesus Christ is going to do with your unconfessed sins? When you set light your parents, when you set light of your pastor, when you set light of the people of your congregation of your church, when you set light of your children, when you set light of your boss. The only way sins are, are, are gone is if they're under the blood. If they're not under the blood, guess what? God's going to name them. He's writing down a book. And he's recording. If there's one thing that the book of Numbers tells us, God is a great bookkeeper. And one thing we are told by the New Testament, with John and Paul, God has a mighty eraser when it comes to sins. Is there anything that God can't do? He cannot remember your sins under the blood. Thou hast despised my holy things. And that's everything that was in the tabernacle. There's, there's places in, in the, the Kings and Samuel that they would strip the gold off the door of the temple to go pay a heathen army. That was God's gold. And has profaned my Sabbath. And that's not for the Jew. I mean, that's not for us. That's for the Jew. We've already discussed that. The Jews were told to honor the Sabbath. So when Jesus comes, the Pharisees, man, they are overbroading the Sabbath. In thee, or I have lost count what we're at and how many sins. In thee are men that carry tails to shed blood. What's that? Wasn't there a time with Jesus that they sought people to lie about Jesus so they can crucify him? And they said, not a few. Many came. These are people who are going into the courtroom of Israel. Saying, I saw whatever they did under the thing. And they would lie so the person would be murdered. Like Jezebel did to Naboth. She hired men to say two accusations against him, and they stole him. And in thee, they eat upon the mountains. And if you go back to our studies, that's just not taking a picnic with your wife and children. That's taking a picnic with your wife and children for the worship of gods. You know, when you go to a high place, you can be closer to God. When I go in the woods, I am so close to God and nature. In the midst of thee, they commit lewdness. Not just crime, lewdness. Look that word up in the dictionary. In thee, look at all the in these. I should have counted them. In thee have they discovered their father's nakedness. Like Reuben went upon his father's wife. Adultery and fornication. In thee have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. The women in their time of life. And we read about that earlier in Ezekiel. A woman that was supposed to be set apart for, during those times. And, and one hath committed abomination with his neighbor's wife. Isn't that one of the commandments? 
Look at all the commandments they're breaking. Just the top ten. Never mind what the law states about the fatherless and the widow. Look at the big top ten. When I street preach, I, you know, somebody will come up to me. Well, you know, what do you think of a sodomite? Let, let's let's break down to the big ten. You ever told a lie? Bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. See, we put sin as great episodes. All sin is sin. And another has lewdly defiled his daughter-in-law. That's his son's wife. You got such a great family relationship. And there's one whole chapter dedicated in Leviticus about relations where God says an abomination. And another in the, in Jerusalem, has humbled his sister his father's daughter you've got in the family sexual child molestation going on is that what's going on in America today I know for sure that's what's going on in America today in a child of God's home in a Christian home there is child and family molestation going on How's that? In thee have they taken gifts to shed blood. Here. Uh, you know, the mafia story. Haven't we heard in the news recently a woman's been caught handing money over to kill her husband? We're not only reading the B.C. 593 of Judah and Jerusalem. We are reading the modern newspaper of America, USA. What did God do to his people he destroyed? What does is, what is America claim? It claims to be the Christian nation. Well, okay, if you have that title, guess what God's going to do to you just as much as he did to Jerusalem? He's going to flat destroy you. Thou hast taken usury and increase. Now that was not illegal for a Jew with the Gentiles. What the clause here in the law is, you were not supposed to charge usury and increase of a fellow Jew. So they're not treating their fellow Jews all right. They are taking advantage of their fellow Jews. It was against the Mosaic law given by God. You could not as a Jew charge an increase or interest to another Jew. And thou hast greedily gained of thy neighbors by extortation. How's that? Isn't that America? You might as well just stand in the street corner and read this. Maybe sometime I will. And has forgotten me, save the Lord God. You ever think about forgetting about God and sin? Sit down at some guy's desk. Here's some paperwork. Here's my pen. Sign it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Three years. I can do that. Ten years. Yeah, I can do that. $230 a month? Yeah, I could do that. And did you ask God if you could do that? That's a sin. You forgot God. How about, how about having a church service where you don't even think of God? All the time. You ever get in your car, start it up, take off down the road and forgot all about God and prayer? Have you forgotten God to teach your children what the Bible says? I know some people right now who are studying the ministry and they don't sit down with the Bible with their family. But they're going to study for the ministry. Really? You can't start at home? Forgetting God is a sin. 
according to God. How's that? And we ain't done. Behold, therefore I have smitten my hand at thy dishonest gain. Oh, was that not America? As a grocery store employee, I can tell you what's going on right now. Your products are getting smaller while the price is remaining the same. The jar or the can is getting smaller. The plastic package is getting smaller, but the price is not. That's dishonest gain when you're told to put that behind the other products and let the big size sell out before you get to the little size. They're not supposed to know that it's shrinking. You're not supposed to know that a soup company is going to remove nine ingredients and add more water. You're not supposed to know that. And we're not going to drop the price. Hey, I work grocery. Which thou hast made. And at thy blood, which thou, which has been in the midst of. Notice how the murder keeps coming up. Thou shalt not kill. Wow, we're talking about the Big Ten. Can thy heart endure? Where the heart man believes on the righteousness? You have soiled your heart where you're not going to come to God. Because it's not mine. I was listening to something the other day. I forget what it was. And they were saying, yeah, all things, you know, is the mind. No, it's not the mind. You're wrong. It's the heart. It is your heart condition. So you are involved in all these sins, and you are ruining your heart. You are ruining your chance to have fellowship with God, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10. Or can thy hands be strong? When God's against you, when God has said, I have smitten my hands at, at you, are your hands going to remain? In the days that I shall deal with thee, that third and final time that he's going to send Babylon into the land. Remember, he's talking to Jerusalem. And I, the Lord, have spoken it and will do it. So you think it's going to happen? Oh, you better believe it. Do you think when God says, I am going to throw those in hell who have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, do you think, oh, God is love? you think God, okay, here. Here's your get out of hell free card. I don't think so. And I will scatter thee among the heathen and disperse thee in the countries and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. Man, aren't the Jews everywhere in the world? And thou shalt take thy inheritance in thyself in the sight of the heathen. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. What you take with you will be all that you have. We see a lot of homeless people down here in Daytona Beach. And what they own is in a shopping carriage or in a, in a, uh, a book bag. And that's it. That's all they have. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. And that's the scum when you boil metal this gunk that floats out around my dad and I when we were growing up we would make our own sinkers for fishing we we take lead and we boil it up we have to keep on scooping off that scum keep scooping off that scum that's what the draw said all thy all they are brass and tin and iron and lead brass symbols judgment in the Bible Tin is not really that, up to aluminum, tin used to be your tin cans. Iron has a bad references in the Bible. And lead, there's a thing called lead poisoning. And God says, Israel, you are brass. You are tin. You are iron. You are lead. In the midst of the furnace. What was one of the punishments that Nebuchadnezzar used? He used a furnace. They are even the dross of silver. That's a junk you'll find in silver. They're not silver. It's the junk found in silver. 
Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, ye are all become dross. Behold, therefore I will gather you in the midst of Jerusalem, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin, into the midst of the furnace, to blow the fire upon it, to melt it. So will I gather you in my anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath. Does that sound like the grave of, of Jehovah Witnessism? Right around my shoulder, what, not even a mile away, there's a gathering of people in, in, under the ground. I don't see any fire and smoke coming out of that ground. Do you? So it's got to be a lot more than the grave. What did Adolf Hitler do with the Jews? He used furnaces. Crematoriums. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. And ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon it. He's talking about hell. You don't want to trust me, God saying? Fine. You can clean yourself up by fire. And you never will come out. You know what hell is for a human being? It's your works cleaning yourself up. But how much can you save yourself by your works? You can never do it. You can never be pure. It, it almost looks like in hell you're still sinning. You can talk. You've got eyes. You've got a tongue. You're angry. You're cursing God. You're cursing the people that are around you that put you in there. I sure would not want to be a Catholic priest in hell when everybody else has got a mouth. And they remember who Abraham How, how does that guy know who Abraham was? You ever ask yourself that rich man? He says, Father Abraham, how do you know? How did Peter know that it was Elijah and Moses? Did they have little Nathan? Hello, I'm Moses. Hello, I'm Elijah. That that rich guy that was in hell, remember he had children. He had a family. I would assume by my understanding, and I could be wrong, but I think Adolf Hitler hated Jews. I think I could safely say that. Can you imagine him waking up in hell and seeing all the Jews from the Old Testament being there with him? You think he's a happy camper? How about all the Jews that he had killed being with him in hell? Do you think they're happy campers? And the word of the Lord came with him. Look how many times. This, this chapter has it three times, inspiration of God. Hell is an inspiration of God, 17 to 22. You are in the eyes of God without Jesus Christ. Your brass, your judgment, your tin, you ain't worth nothing. Your iron, your trouble, and your lead poisoning. I'm going to throw you in a fire and you're not going to get clean. Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, Jerusalem. Nor rain upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst of thereof. Remember the prophets were, fought, were preaching falseness against Jeremiah? Like a roaring lion ravening the prey. They have devoured souls. You ever see a lion when, when they got this big animal? They're all just covered with blood. They're just glomping at that dead body. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst of Oh, the prophets have been killing. What did they want to do with Jeremiah? They wanted to kill him. The prophets were killing him. Her priests have violated my law. They were in charge of the law. They have profaned my holy things. 
Read Malachi. They have put no difference between holy and profane. Evil is good and good is evil. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And had hid their eyes from my Sabbath. They're not even doing the Sabbath. Oh boy, they're overdoing it when Jesus comes. And I am profaned among them. God has become a curse. God has become a joke by his priest. You know, when we read, I want to say it earlier, but when we read verses 3 to 13, all these sins, the priests weren't helping the people. They weren't showing, hey, that's a sin, stop it. Hey, you're not supposed to be doing that to your sister-in-law. Stop it. Matter of fact, we're supposed to stone you for doing it. They weren't helping the widows. Let us relieve you of what your husband left behind. Let us give you a little refreshing. They're not helping the fathers. Hey, you need a job to support your mom who lost your father. We're not taking care of you. We're not helping the families going through crisis. Pastors today are in the pulpit and they preach, but they don't help the people. They got other things to do. Some of them you don't even see from only on Sundays to Sundays. Never mind the midweek services anymore. The priests have defiled God. The priests, Revelation 1 calls us priests. We have defiled God in the last church age that we make God sick. Wake up, Laodicean church. All over the world. You ain't so good according to God. You're filthy. Her princes, this is the... the, the Prophets are those that, you know, tell the priests are the ones that were in the temple. Her princes, this is the government. In the midst thereof are like wolves. We've had lions. We have wolves. Dorothy got it wrong. Lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my, no, lions and wolves. Ravening, ravening, that's a word. The prey. Here are animals feasting on the dead. To shed blood. Oh, they're not dead yet. They're going to kill. And to destroy souls. How do you destroy souls? You don't tell them the truth. You don't tell them, Mr. Priest, how to get right with God. So when they do die... Their souls go off into hell. That's the only way you can destroy a soul. Jesus said, you know, who cares who can do what I'm not going for it. Who cares who, what can do to the body? But fear him that can destroy the soul. And to destroy the soul, that's God taking a soul and throwing it into hell. cross reference that with what Jesus said. Ready for this? Ready for, the, ready for the church? That one big church? To get dishonest gain. See, if you eat Jesus, you'll destroy your soul. If you pray to Mary, you'll destroy your soul. If you trust in us, the hierarchy, and that guy over there in Italy, you'll destroy your soul. For what? Dishonest gain. Your husband's died? Well, if you pay us to say this many prayers, we can get him limited time in purgatory. That's a dishonest game. And there are people in the pulpits of a Baptist church, both male and female, who are in that pulpit to get dishonest game because I really don't have to work that hard. Just come up with a message. Hey, I can find messages online and just print it out. Hey, I can have my organization give me a calendar and say, this is Palm 
Message Day. This is Cherry Tree Blossom Day. This is Moses the Great Intercessor Day. This is Mother's Day. This is Father's Day. This is Jesus' birthday. This is July 4th Day. There are preachers that preach all kinds of messages to the day that it is. For what? So your soul can be destroyed and you get dishonest gain. You think all people that go to church on Sunday morning in America are saved? I got some swamp land for you in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico if you're interested in buying it. And her prophets have dubbed them with untempered martyrs. And we read about that again. It's just, it's not the proper. It's not strength. Seeing vanity, that's nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's seen with your eyes closed. And divining lies unto them. Ooh. What's a divine lie? Say, thus saith the Lord God. And what's the answer? When the Lord has not spoken. Thus saith the God. If you give me ten dollars, God will give you ten thousand dollars. And all kinds of prize, prosperity. God's going to kill you if you don't come in these church doors every time they're open. I've heard church mess messages like that. I've been in church. You're going to be here when the doors are open. Hebrews. Thus saith the Lord. All kinds of thus saith the Lord. You know what God's saying up in heaven? I didn't say that. Gabriel, where's that recorded? And Jesus said, and Jesus Wow. It's going on. It's alive in America today. And all through the world. There are even Bibles out there, modern Bibles. Thus saith God. And it's been erased. And it's been added. And it's been footnoted to death. The people of the land have used oppression. That, that sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds like your employers of America. And exercise robbery. Wow. Exercise. Lift one, lift two, two laps. Get strengthened. Build your muscles. Take your vitamins. And have vexed the poor and needy. That's Washington, D.C. How come we're going to take care of, oh, I don't want to get positive, but I just want to mention one little thing. About this. How come we're going to take all these Syrian refugees here, but we, we can't take care of our veterans? The President of the United States has put many people out of work. Why can't we take care of them first? Why we got to bring more? And that's, and that's all I'm going to talk about. I'm just using it for the illustration of verse 29. How come Hollywood actors and actresses are vexing the poor and needy? Can't you see this little boy here with flies all over his face? For a cup of coffee, you can help this little girl here and her family survive. Just for the price of a cup of coffee, you can do Listen, lady. Listen, man. You make more money than I make. Why don't you buy 500 cups of coffee for that person right there? Why you, Mr. Rich Order, got all this money and got that mansion? You want me to give my money. As far as I know, that could be some child in Hollywood on the stage. You're using the poor. You're using the condition for your profile, for who you really want to be. The great, the to you. And have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Now, you think you're so good? You think you're so great? You think you're, you know what, don't stink? Yeah, that right. And I, God, sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge. Somebody who's going to protect the nation. You know what a hedge says? This is my property. That's your property. Don't cross the hedge. And stand in the gap before me for the land. There's a big hole around Jerusalem. Let's put it. We can talk about Jerusalem. Who is going to step in that gap for God to cross over 
into the land. God can't cross over. Sin has filled the gap. This is very important. Now you need to get this. Maybe we should just do these two verses all by himself. God says, I sought for a man. I want a man to stand up and be a hedge, and I want a man to lie down and be the path. That I should not destroy it. But I found none. Not even I, uh, not even Ezekiel, not even Jeremiah could do it. Sorry. And listen, don't you realize that for Ezekiel and Jeremiah, God is, I don't know how God's doing it. I don't know. But God is speaking to him. Does God show who he is? is I mean, does God become some kind of a, a, a shape? Is it in the ear? Can you even fathom how this sounds to Ezekiel and Jeremiah? I can't. How does the Holy God speak to you? That you write down books that he said, I want you to write. And he's doing it to Jeremiah, and he's doing it for Ezekiel. He says, I couldn't find one man. Isaiah 7, 14, Genesis 18, 22. I couldn't find not even a man we're reading about Ezekiel. You know why? Because he's a sinner. Why not Jeremiah? Jeremiah is confessing his sins. He's a sinner. God says, I've looked. Remember the story with uh, Abraham and Sodom? Oh, Lord, 40 people. If there's 40 people there, all right. Lord, 35? All right. 20? All right. 10? Okay. Let's see. That's a lot. That's his wife. That's his two daughters. He's got more than two daughters. And their husbands. Well, maybe 10 about to do it. Let me ask you a question. Did God destroy Sodom? He did. He destroyed Gomorrah. And according to what the Bible says, Lot was a just man. He couldn't find anybody to prevent him from destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot got out, right? But he couldn't save the land. Didn't Ezekiel get out? Isn't he in Babylon? He couldn't save the land. Didn't Jeremiah write to us after the third captivity, after the third charge of the Babylonians, that when they came and took everything, didn't Jeremiah write to us? But he couldn't save the land. So if you think as a preacher, you're going to save all America with your great revival, <clears throat> on you. Ezekiel couldn't do it. Jeremiah couldn't do it. And God literally, literally spoke to them. God speaks to me through his word, but he doesn't go in my ear and say, if he did, you better get me for a false prophet, because God said, I'm not doing that no more. you got the word. You ever hear me say, God spoke to me in my ear, in my bed, you better just shoot me, because I'm on the road of corruption and corrupting you. But Ezekiel, and I can't even, th I think about it sometimes when I say, thus saith the Lord. I try to think, what does his voice sound like? I never even heard his voice. What did Peter, James, John, Andrew, Matthew, I can't name all of them. I should be able to, I'm sorry, I don't. What did Jesus sound like? What did he sound like before, before Pilate? What was his, he was without sin, wasn't he? So that means he never had a, a, a harsh voice. He had just had the holy perfect voice. What did it sound like? You ever wonder that? And I can't stand the gap. I cannot save my wife. Matter of fact, I so can't save my wife. My wife got saved before she became my wife. I can't save my children. You know what? I can't even save myself. For by grace are we saved through faith and not of ourselves. So don't look for me to save you. Don't look. I can't do it. You know what you do if, if, if you were drowning and you were brass? You sink to the bottom. 
You know what you do if you're if you're drowning and you were tin, you sink to the bottom. You know what you do with iron? You sink to the bottom and rust. You know what you do with lead? You just sink. Now I said I saw one person. Therefore, because I couldn't find none, therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. And he ain't done yet. With Ezekiel, there's more to come. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. That is hell. Their own way have I recompense on their heads, saith the Lord God. Do what God tells you to do with your sins. You better not rely on yourself. And you better not just keep on going on with your sins. Well, that guy lived with his sins. Look at, no, 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 no. You better, you better stop, drop on your knees, repent, and get right now. Because you don't know if you've got a second later. Oh, wonderful.